started to hear rumors. A reunion? An album? It was like they timed it perfectly with my life of wandering the globe, looking for a home. But they are my home. Hearing the official announcement of an album and tour in early 2008 was like being 12 and hearing their voices through my boombox for the very first time. I was consumed. First up was the total replacement of my arsenal of merchandise. eBay became my temple, and I went to worship. I had to have it all. My room became a beautiful replica of my childhood. Their faces covered my walls, and shrines built of lunch boxes, albums, water bottles, and dolls flooded my floor. It was breathtaking. I even bought a floor mat with them on it, never to be stepped on. <laughs> my life was like Christmas in July and August and September. My friends came to realize that this was not a joke. The possibility of bringing a boy home from the bar was no longer an option, <laughs> but that was fine by me. I didn't need men in my life. I already had five. <laughs> Danny, the sporty one. Donnie, the bad boy. Joe, the baby. John, the awkward one. And Jordan, the star. As a kid, I idolized Punky Brewster, rocking an offbeat style of mismatched shoes, neon and bows on my chunky body. I had hair permed like a poodle. My brothers called me Fifi. <laughs> Rachel McCool and I were the only early bloomers in our sixth grade class. Puberty hit me like a brick wall, with my chest transforming to double Ds overnight, and the red dot of doom arriving with a vengeance. This womanhood thing kinda sucked, and I was lost. My whole, my whole world changed when I heard, please don't go, girl, on the radio, which was quickly followed by seeing their radiant faces in a glossy magazine. New kids on the block. My hormones blazing, I focused my confused yearnings on this boy band from Boston. Joey McIntyre's blue eyes stared into my soul from the pages of Teen Beat magazine. His voice flooded my existence, blaring from my cassette tape of Hangin' Tough. They had sheets, posters, jewelry, playing cards, fashion plates, doll wearing, dolls wearing street clothes and concert clothes, and of course, the stage. I was hooked on merch from a very young age. I had to have everything. My eating became a little disordered even because I, ha I used my lunch money to purchase teeny bopper mags down at Safeway. When they finally came to town to perform live, my mom would not allow it. She said I was too young. I was crushed and angry. I still have not forgiven her for this. <laughs> After that tragedy, I was allowed to sleep out in line for concert tickets behind the Tower Records. My seats were still up in the rafters, but it didn't matter because I could hear the voices that defined my life, and they were in the same arena as me. Freak out! <laughs> I was drenched in my obsession. My daily outfit in middle school was acid-washed denim jeans with giant new kid buttons cascading down the front of my legs a new kid's t-shirt, and of course, a Boston hat, covered in small buttons. <laughs> Rachel McCool was my only friend and the only other blockhead at my school. We would get in scratching cat fights, watching concert videos in slow motion, battling over who got Joe. I was not cool at all, but I owned it. It took three years of crazed lust before I stopped kissing their lips on my walls every night before I went to sleep. I even took down a few posters from my new kid-coated walls and ceiling. I was moving on as they were moving on. Their fans were growing up and kissing boys on real lips. The radio had officially moved on for quite some time. Color Me Bad was singing, I wanna sex you up, <laughs> to distract us from the fact that the magical moment was over. BT dubs, I saw Color Me Bad in concert four times. I let NKOTB go. I got a real boyfriend who actually kissed me back. But I will never forget my first love, ever. Fifteen years later, I found myself listening to their greatest hits on repeat and joining fan boards online. The possibility of feeling 12 again was too much to resist. The anticipation for new music was the best foreplay I have ever received. <laughs> but what if I don't like it? Am I crazy for spending hundreds of dollars replacing all of my paraphernalia? My pre-ordered album finally arrives, and I burrow into my new kid's dungeon. 
hoarding this moment for myself. Track one plays through my headphones, and I'm immediately calmed to the point of a drug-like euphoria. It was them. Each voice so distinct to me. They can do no wrong. <laughs> I bought three hard copies and the iTunes version. <laughs> I followed the Nukas on the block on their reunion tour across the United States. <laughs> Did a couple of dates in Canada and then traveled through Europe, <laughs> stalking them by myself. I touched all five of them in Cleveland, my first show on the tour, and it just snowballed from there. I was like a 12-year-old with credit cards, solo road trips and spur-of-the-moment flights. Lady Gaga was their opening act. I went to shows late. I became a blockhead celebrity. My title, Donnie fucking Wahlberg, girl. Gotta go for the bad boy. He owns the stage with his swagger and charm. Every concert I went to, I held up a sign with my sharpied letters blazing, Donnie fucking Wahlberg. <laughs> oh, Donnie. <laughs> he always noticed, and during his song Cover Girl, I would hold it high until he asked me to toss it up to him. I only had the finest of seats. It became part of his performance to hold my sign up on stage. I threw my bra on stage in Denver, <laughs> was handed a towel in LA, received a kiss from Donnie in Edmonton, and a jersey off his back in Dusseldorf, Germany. <laughs> in Seattle, Donnie gave me his phone number. <laughs> Who in their right mind would give a known stalker their phone number? <laughs> Donnie fucking Wahlberg. I tried to play it cool. And we had a few festive text conversations that I will forever clutch on to. Then I heard some bitch release his number to the masses of batshit crazy fans. And it all came to an end. Sometimes I don't feel like I am a true fan because nearly all of their hardcore fans have new kid tattoos. The most popular one being getting one of them to autograph your body and then going to get it inked for real. I even know a girl named Sandy that has a leg sleeve devoted to them. The reunion has lasted longer than their heyday did back in the 90s. Just last month, I went on my fifth annual New Kids cruise. This is the best four days of my entire year. 3,000 women in their 30s, a handful of gays, and the new kids on the block take over a carnival cruise ship every May. It costs a fortune. I wouldn't miss it for anything on this planet. The gaggle of worshippers flock to a ship that has been decked out with merch, banners, and a crew that has no fucking clue what is about to go down. <laughs> We all decorate our doors like middle school lockers <laughs> and do not sleep for four straight days, freaking out over our mutual frenzy for the five guys from Boston. <laughs> they perform their songs, sign autographs, conduct yoga classes, and back rub sessions while basking in the glory of our adoration. I am surrounded by crazy ass bitches. <laughs> These are my people. <laughs> this past cruise, John, the gay one, knocked on our cabin door to say hi and take pictures with us. Donnie pulled me in for a slow dance and told me he fucking loves me. <laughs> Joe cried while talking about finishing the Boston Marathon just minutes before the bombing, and he put his medal on for the first time. Danny made us turkey burgers. <laughs> and, and Jordan, well, looking at him is like staring at the sun. <laughs> These are my cruise wristbands, including the VIP that Donnie pressed into my hand on the Lido deck. I will wear them until they fall off. 
I love the new kids on the block. <laughs> they have built a personal experience around the soundtrack of my life. I feel like I'm becoming a little bit more responsible as this reunion gig rolls into its sixth year. They are on tour right now and I am not with them. Well, I, I did go to Detroit and Cleveland last weekend for a couple of shows. <laughs> But lately, I haven't been wearing a new kid shirt every single day. I feel like my second puberty is slowly coming to a close, and I'm growing up a little, step by step. <laughs> but no matter where my life leads me, I'll be loving them forever. Because they got the right stuff, baby. They're the reason why I sing this song. Jennifer Stephmick! <laughs> 